there's a there's an article on WWE.com that says, "Does Roman deserve a title shot?" Question mark. You gotta be kidding me. You actually think you deserve a shot at this? You don't deserve, buddy. One, two, three. Hello and welcome to the Kayfabe is Dead podcast, episode 31. I'm your host, the voice of the youth, Christian. And as always, we're here to talk some wrestling. How are you guys doing today? I'm not doing too bad myself. I'm just trying to bust this out before I go to work. I start at 4 o'clock. I'm recording this at 1.30. And I don't see this going more than 40 minutes. I'm going to be talking uh, Monday Night Raw. A pretty good amount of it, because it was a pretty good show. Smackdown Live, not too much of it, because it was pretty... It, it was an okay show, but it wasn't that, uh... That, I don't know, eventful is the word, I guess I have for it. And I'll be talking NXT, because I finally did my duty, and I caught up with it. And I just want to give some praise to it, and that'll be towards the ending. So if you guys want to hear... Any of those segments or any of those, that's how that's the order. It's going to be Raw, SmackDown, NXT. So that's my plan for today. As far as news goes, I uh, see the only news that I could think of is news that I, well, a few things actually. The May Young Classic that uh, the taping just started yesterday. So that's pretty, uh, I, I actually, you know what? I got a few news to talk, to talk about today. So, uh, if you guys are interested in hearing some of the news topics for this week, well, here it is. The May Young Classic started yesterday, the taping at least. I think it was just only the inter... No, it was the introduction as well as I think every female wrestled. And Ronda Rousey was there in attendance. I think she was rooting on one of her MMA friends that is trying to wrestle as well. So, um... I She posed with Triple H, like the iconic, you know, I just signed the pose, but, uh... Does this indicate anything for Ronda Rousey? Ah, it, it's a it's a better sign than nothing. I was talking about it with my friends who uh, we we also have an MMA podcast and you it's also on this channel as well. You can check it out. It's called it's called First Strike Podcast. I'm literally uploading a video as I'm doing this. Um, we I talked about it with my friends, and they like, you know, they they see wrestling as. You know, when you're an MMA fan, you kind of see wrestling a little differently just because you're, you're used to watching real fighting and quote-unquote and things like that. So they're like, yeah, Ron Rousey should just join the UFC. Not knowing it's not that easy of a transition, you know what I mean? It, it, we've seen MMA fighters try to do it before and vice versa, you know, wrestling wrestlers try to go to MMA. And I feel like, honestly, there's been more success with the counterpart. We had the Brock Lesnar who did a successful run. Bobby Lashley, who did a successful run. Batista, you know, it didn't work out for him, but he, it was something. CM Punk tried it. But on the other hand, how many wrestlers were MMA fighters? Shinsuke Nakamura is one I can mention off the top of my head. Um, Baron Corbin was a golden glove. I, I don't, that's, a lot of people are, though. I don't think that's that great of a compliment. Um... Yeah, it's kind of hard. To, uh, like, the Floyd doesn't count, obviously. Muhammad Ali doesn't count. Mike Tyson doesn't really... You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's it's hard to... Maybe, maybe you do want to count them. I don't know. But I was trying to explain to them that that transition isn't as seamless as it may sound. Like, does Ronda Rousey really want to waste... At least, you know, she's not going to get it like Kurt Angle did in six months or how many freakish months he got it done, his training and... His master of the wrestling, the whole wrestling feeling, and I don't know how he did it so easily. It's that's also because he was a pure wrestler, so he had all the technical skill down already. And Ronda Rousey is more judo. That that's what she, that's what her, uh, her I don't know her specialty is in. I guess I would call it. Um. So does she really want to waste like two years, or you know, at least you figure a year? A year to three years is like the desired wrestling training, and it's hard because the women's division isn't what it was back then. So you're trying to catch up to the Charlottes, the Becky Lynches, the Sasha Banks, Asuka's, the Baileys, even Natalia is pretty damn good, you know? So 
does she really want to waste time when she could be making money doing elsewhere, other things, like movies, like, I don't think she's ever going to be back in UFC again just because of how tortured her her face was in the last one. Movies, you know, promotions, and just everything else. She could do TV shows, she could do this, she could do that, she could be so many other things. She got the world, excuse me, the world at her hands. And she could pick either palm that she wants at, the, at this point in her life. So what is she going to do? I mean, she can make good money in uh, WWE. So, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I would be intrigued to see it happen. Will it? It's up to her. Does she want to waste the years of training? I mean, it wouldn't be a waste. It would it would counteract pretty good. but And I'm pretty sure she'll still get paid for it. Like, it's nothing. I don't know. It's up to her. I'll be interested in seeing it. Even if it's a one and done, I'll, I'll be fine with seeing that as well. We've seen many of the one and dones with celebrities before, so why not this? But uh, yeah, so that was the. Speaking of these fighters, these uh, MMA fighters, Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. I'm not going to get too in depth of this, but I hear. Um, not I hear, but Triple H did like invite them to Monday Night Raw, saying that their mics work. You know, throwing shots at Showtime because those pressures have been pretty bad so far. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting Interesting if they um, do that. If they get Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor on WWE product, that wouldn't be too bad. I, my, I think I talked about this last podcast. I don't know if I did, actually. I don't know when I recorded it. I, it was my Great Balls of Fire review. So I don't think it was before the first presser, but um, it might have been. I don't know. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna just repeat the point if I already said it, because I know I said it to my friend, so I kind of conflict those two thoughts around. As them coming to Monday Night Raw, it's gonna bring eyes to the WWE product, yes. But I only want it if these superstars. Literally, when I say superstars, I'm not talking about wrestlers. I'm talking about these icons. Um, you know the Mayweather and McGregor. Only if they get involved with the actual WWE superstars. Because if not, then that's not going to leave any... Wow, I want to watch Raw next week. No, that's not going to bring us anything. That's just going to bring us entertainment for another product. And is that really worth it? Like, if they... I know Enzo got a little thing going with uh, Connor. I know Big Show, you know, Big Show and Floyd had something before. Miz is just an entertaining figure in general. Maybe he can mediate between the two... That would be kind of interesting. But the thing is, when you see these people, they're 5'8". They're the 205 Live guys. They're shorter than Neville. Shorter than, I think they're just as tall as Brian Kendrick, if not shorter. Like, we're going to view them a little awkwardly compared to some of these monsters of these WWE superstars. So, I don't know. If it could benefit both sides, then yes. I'm more than welcome to do it because I'm more than welcome and open to the idea and I'll be down for it as a as a fan. And since I am a fan of MMA and boxing and all that, I, I, I want to see it anyways. It's just, I don't want to, like, LeVar Ball and his family, I'm a Lakers fan, so yes, I have Lonzo Ball on my team. I'm absolutely loving what he's doing in Summer League right now. That man is... I'm not going to hop on the train saying he's the GOAT, but I don't think he's a bust like other people are saying as well. If you guys want to hear NBA, well, we got a podcast about that too. That's on the channel as well. It's called the Triangle Podcast. Um, Like LeVar Ball, his family admitted to never watching WWE before. And that's the type of talent you invite to your show. I understand like it brings eyes to the product and they had a segment with The Miz and it was trending and everything like that. But you want to have people that are passionate about what they're going to do. Lonzo Ball said he never saw wrestling a day in his life. And I'm not ridiculing him for that. I think it's kind of ridiculous somebody didn't grow up wrestling in their life, but that's not everybody. That's not Everybody isn't like us. Everybody isn't like me. But um, why would, as, you know, as, as a company, why would you want to bring that in? Somebody that knows nothing about this product, knows nothing about how things goes on, and that's what you want to invite inside your product, you know what I mean? I understand it's celebrities, and but uh, but like everybody else who deals with the product, Stephen Amell is a big wrestling fan. Ronda Rousey, she got her her Ronda Rowdy name from Roddy Roddy Piper. 
Um, Shaq, I know he he wanted to entertain it with wrestling. He was into it. Everybody, the guy from I'm pretty sure Wheel of Fortune was even a wrestling fan or something like that. Like um, everybody they brought in knew about it and knew, you know, just what it was at least. And I just felt a little disrespected with that, and I don't want that to happen again. A segment that has nothing to do with bettering the talent that is already on the roster, if that makes any sense. Now, the last bit of news, I don't want to talk about it in depth. It's I don't want to talk about it at all, to be honest. If you guys want to hear more about it, I would say go to the people where I hear sorry, where I hear this from, the what culture. I know they just covered it on their fast count with uh, my man Jack the Jobber. I, I love those guys. Um, and Wrestle Talk TV with Ali and uh, I don't know the other guy's name. He's pretty new. But um, you could hear them talk about it because me personally, I don't want to discuss the, the topic. It's with Paige and Alberto El Patron. So to describe it real briefly, there's been rumors or there has been an altercation between the two or so it seems. Paige denies it. She's bringing, has two conflicting stories of what happened and they don't match up. And then the audio recording of what happened doesn't match up with either story. And then you got her, you know, her brothers commenting on Facebook and posting on Facebook, you know, that she's being abused by a control freak and they seen it before they seen what he does to her and things of that nature and if that is so I mean I'm not trying to accuse anybody of anything that's not what I'm here for this is why I don't want to cover it because it's a sensitive topic that until the final verdict and what actually happened is in front of my face then I don't want to run with anything else but if so if she is being abused I I seen that dealt with before and I'm Obviously, that's the most coward I think a human being could go as as a man uh, to hit, resorting to hitting a woman. But I mean, I'm not gonna speak, you know, too in depth on it. Alberto Alberto Del Rio's lost his goddamn mind. I don't know what is he doing. He's you know he's trying to fight these wrestlers in WWE. He's calling out Triple H every other day. The whole page situation is is way too. It's way too sketchy. I, 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 if I'm running with any side, I'm running with Paige's family, because you know, I, part of being in an abusive relationship is you're always gonna defend the the person you're in the relationship with, and that's just how it is. That's the power they have over you. So you cannot. Of course, you want to take what they say. Yeah, I mean. You gotta you gotta take what they say and hear it as truth because it's the person that is uh, dealing with it. But there's also another side to it. There's also the fear behind it. There's also the just everything involved with it. The fear and you know, Lord knows what else it could be. So I mean, I just hope this all gets figured out. As far as wrestling goes, I mean, wrestling is definitely the undermining factor of this whole story. I think that's the least important fact that he been you know, suspended from TNA or GFW or whatever the hell it's called now. I feel like that's the most, uh, uh, the most, you know, the minim- minimalist detail of this whole story. But um, he he was suspended from there. That doesn't really matter. It just, this whole situation got to get fixed. And maybe next week I have an update on it. But if, if it's stuck here, I feel no need to talk more about it. So... Once again, if you guys do want to keep updated with this, I say follow you know the the sites I already said because they're they're awesome as well. I'm not one to ever put down any other people that do the same thing I do because they're all great. But um, yeah, that's the news covered. I didn't think I'll have anything to talk about with the news, but I I guess I did. So now I guess we're here to talk about Monday Night Raw. Um, a good show. It was um, I don't know. Some people were calling it. I, well, I saw some people call it like a great Raw, the best Raw of the year. I don't know what it is lately. I mean, people call it Great Balls of Fire the best pay-per-view of the year, and now people are calling this Raw the greatest Raw of the year. I I don't know what water they're drinking. I'm not on that train. Once again, wasn't the biggest fan of Great Balls of Fire. This Raw, the highs were definitely better than the lows, but um, the lows were still there. Of course, they are. But I, I do want to admit, and I do want to 
give props where it's due. Give my give the due credit. Um, wrestling has been very entertaining to watch as of late. We just dealt with a very bad dry spot and dry streak of pointless Raws and SmackDowns. And at the time, I wasn't watching NXT like that. So I had nothing. And I was losing so much passion. And I was debating on even if I want to do a podcast that week or the week after. And should I just do predictions? And why am I even watching this? Why am I taking notes? But here I am. I'm back and I'm taking. I'm I'm into it again. So if I if I'm gonna kick them while they're down, I'm gonna help them get back up too, cause I've I've been enjoying it as of late. So uh, let's start with the Monday Night Raw that happened. It was it was it was okay. We had Big Cass started out and he cut a, a he cut what I thought was a great promo. Um, so far, I think probably, you know, it's his first loan promo, but I would say probably his best promo and basically, you know, saying he's past Enzo and whatnot. And, you know, he's, his goals are for the universal championship. His goals are much higher than that. And before he was able to finish, Big Show came out, interrupted him. I don't know how I feel about this being the first feud for Big Cass. I feel like it'll be a good first win. But it's not going to be a good first feud. And it's not going to be a good match. I mean, we, I think Big Show is somehow getting better as a wrestler. I think the I'm still Braun Strowman, Big Show. Those two matches are some of my favorite matches of the year. And I'm not lying to you. Those were two amazing matches. So maybe they could put on a really good match with Big Cass. I'll, let me keep my hopes up. But I don't know how I feel about that as a whole. I'm not going to get too much in detail with that. Now, uh, Finn Balor versus Elias Sampson. I was not into this. See, the thing with me is, um, and it happened with the Seth Rollins-Bray Wyatt match that happened later that day as well. Once I'm not into a storyline, I kind of tune out all the rest. So if there's nothing to be excited going into the match, then even if the match is good, I'm going to see it as all right. If the match was great, maybe I'll see it as good, you know what I mean? But I don't even know if I'll pay attention to it if my mind could even, you know, take that into consideration and realize what I'm actually watching and and analyze it like a person would. I, I I don't know. I just wasn't really into this match. I barely looked up on my screen while it was happening just because, once again, if I'm not into it, I take it, I kind of unassociate my mind with the product. So I wasn't really watching this match. It was okay, though. Um, Balor won, so I guess the feud is over. I guess. Hardys. Uh, This was interesting. They came out, and they were kind of broken. They came out. They used all their terms, the obsolete, the... They were, like starting delete chance they were broken uh, damn near at least so i'm intrigued i i seen that uh i guess i could have threw this in my news as well but now is a good time to talk about it jeff jarrett claimed that he doesn't know why they did that blah 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 tna still owns it Glo- global force for whatever the hell they're called and then matt hardy's wife rebby yeah <laughs> I always yawn. Why is yawning a thing when I do these podcasts? Um, Rebby, who's very active on Twitter, she tweeted back at him saying she doesn't know what he's talking about. They already had an agreement and the truth would come to light very soon. But like, if she talks any bad, she got to pay like $5,000 or something like that. That doesn't sound important. But yeah, so I think WWE wouldn't accept something that's illegal. So I think... I, I think If we're talking about hope for the broken universes, it's more than likely to happen as ever. So while Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy were cutting their broken promo and talking about obsoletes and all, you know, all their brokenness, the club came out and beat them, beat them focusing on the head. And then after that, the club walked away. Then the revival came out. Attacked them, focusing on the head. So, you know what? If this is how we get the broken universe, so be it. Could it have been done in a better way? Probably. 
I think they had something good going with the blood. I mean, you know what? I, maybe there's probably more to it as well. I don't think they'll just appear broken tomorrow. Or, well, not tomorrow, but Monday. So, I don't know. I, there's hopefully more to it. <laughs> ah, what the hell is wrong with me? And that hopefully there's more to it. There should be. In a way, I, they should just come become broken now. There should be more lead up to it, especially for the fans who know nothing about it, such as me. I know there is a broken universe. I know he loves saying obsolete. I know he dyed his hair. But it's Brother Nero and... Uh... Oh, damn. It, it, does Matt Hardy have a name? Or is it just Matt? I have no idea. Like, that's how much I know. I think I think Brother Nero is Jeff Hardy, I'm pretty sure. Anyways. So, yeah, that's kind of news in itself. And that happened on Raw, so that was pretty cool. Now, what happened that wasn't cool is this Ambro and Miz feud, because it's still alive. At least I thought. Until Seth Rollins came and saved him. Saved Ambrose from being attacked by the Miz Taraj. Then Ambrose met with him backstage and said, I don't need your help. I don't want your help. Cool. I like that. Now I'm going to skip to the ending segment. This this Wyatt and Seth Rollins match because they had a rematch. And I was unexcited that they had this feud going at all. Anyways. um, So they had a match. Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. I'm pretty sure Wyatt won. And after the match, the Miztourage came out and came for Seth Rollins. Then Ambrose came out once again. And what I would do with this, you know, I, I think Ambrose and Miz should be absolutely done. What I would do with this is, you know, have the Miztourage face off against Ambrose and uh, Seth Rollins and all that good stuff. And then, you know, they ha- they're a tag team again for a little bit. You know, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, they're, they're a tag team for this story at least. And then let's have Ambrose, you know, I, I would say have Seth Rollins face off against Miz at SummerSlam, which is honestly what I said in my my Dream Card pro- podcast, I, how I would book SummerSlam. I think that was episode 25. It's my version of fantasy booking SummerSlam. Definitely check that out. And I said Seth Rollins and Miz should face each other. It makes the match seem very credible. So you have them face off at SummerSlam. And to have Miz keep the belt, have Ambrose interfere in the match. On Seth Rollins' behalf. Have him attack Seth Rollins. Have him turn on Seth Rollins. Let's revitalize and put new energy into this. What was what once was this Ambrose and Rollins feud. Because it was one of the greatest feuds I ever seen in recent history. And it was amazing. And let's flip roles and have Ambrose in his proper heel enigma. And have Seth Rollins be a proper babyface. This adds a spark that we haven't seen as of late, and we need that. If the Shield isn't getting back together, no way all of them should be all faces right now. That's how I would do it. Ambrose and Rollins, you you know, you know, put the icy belt, you give that some love, first of all, because you're fighting for it. That's what this feud started over. Then that kind of leads to Rollins and Ambrose, and then you have this Miz Taraj thing going. I feel like that better, that better offs everybody. Like, I'm more than willing to watch that. I think that's a... I, I don't know if they get Hell in a Cell this year. I'm pretty sure Hell in a Cell is around that October time. So it'll, it'll match up almost perfectly with this storyline. You know, August is SummerSlam. September, they could have a regular one-on-one match. Then October hits, and we have a hell, another Hell in a Cell with the two guys, and I'm not complaining. I, well, I don't know if Raw would get it again, but I don't know how it's going to work. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's the way to go with this. But as far as Ambrose, Ambrose and Miz, dead it. I don't want it anymore. That's that's stupid. It's done. I'm I'm, I'm cool with it. Now, this kind of got me tight. But what happened after made up for it. Kurt Angle came out. They were hyping this up all day, even before the day happened. Kurt was gonna come out and give Braun Strowman's injury update. What was up with Braun Strowman, and um, you know everything on his, you know. Just health-wise, details. And his update on Braun Strowman was that he doesn't know. And that's what they hyped up for the whole show. But he invited Brock Lesnar out to um, congratulate him and discuss his next opponent for SummerSlam. And he was basically like, hey, listen, I just won. I'm not here to I'm not here to do the matchmaking cards. Like, that's just your job. I'm not doing that. And then that's when Roman came out. And 
Listen, man, this was one of the best segments of the year, hands down. Roman Reigns, you're not a face. You're not a heel. You're the badass that you should have been your whole career and should be your whole career. You are in a perfect state right now, and I feel like as fans, we got to shut the hell up and take it. Roman Reigns didn't win his... uh. When was the last match Roman Reigns won on pay-per-view? The WrestleMania match. When was the last match Roman Reigns won? He lost to Samoa Joe. He lost to Fatal 5-Way. He lost to Braun Strowman. He's taking L's. Sure, he's being put right in front of the line every single time, but he is taking L's. Which is what matters, what we wanted. Roman Reigns isn't talking about Sucky Suckatosh anymore. He's coming out saying, I did what you couldn't, Kurt Angle, when I got rid of Braun Strowman. Where is he at right now? He's not being this baby face that he once was. He's being a badass, taking out Braun Strowman in a heel fashion, but still kind of being in the middle. He's taking L's. He's doing what we wanted him to do. He went for the U.S. title. That didn't really work out, yeah, but... We got to shut the hell up with criticizing Roman Reigns because the dude can wrestle. Right now in his position, I thought he cut a great promo. Was he behind in Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe? Yes, but is that a bad group of people to be behind? I think he cuts a better promo than Seth Rollins. I think he cuts a better promo than Dean Ambrose. Cuts a better promo than Finn Balor. Cuts a better promo than, you know, a lot of people. You know, I, I'm not going to put KO, him him above KO or him above even AJ Styles or Cena, but he cuts a better promo than Nakamura. He, he, he can't talk. So, what are we complaining about here? The fact he's still put to the front of the line? So is a lot of people. Seth Rollins, for the most part, was. But why? Because he, he could do flips and he could wrestle... Well, even though I don't think he puts on better matches than Roman Reigns, even though he wrestles better than him, yes, I agree, he doesn't put better matches on than him, but since he's Seth Rollins and he's the, you know, on paper, the better wrestler, we should ignore if he's pushed to the front. AJ Styles is pushed to the front every day, but we're not complaining about that, and I'm not saying we should, AJ Styles is amazing, he is what he is meant to be, phenomenal. My favorite in WWE right now, hands down. Except there's one guy in NXT who I, I'm head over heels for. Um, I'll get to that later. I just feel, Roman Reigns, you're doing phenomenal. Keep doing you. Honestly, cut out that the criticism on him. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. But he cut a great promo. Sounds like a badass. Exactly what we want him to be. We can't complain. But Brock said... Literally, what I said last podcast, does Roman Reigns deserve it? No. And what Brock Lesnar said, hey, bro, you don't deserve shit. Just like that. And this ultimately this ultimately led out to Samoa Joe coming through, fired up, ready to fight, saying, Brock Lesnar, you didn't beat me, you escaped me. He he asked for, he was like, if anybody's getting a title shot, it should be me again. And Paul Heyman was like, no, that's not going to happen. We want Roman Reigns. It, it made him Samoa Joe seem so monstrous. Wow, you'll take Roman Reigns over me? What's the reason? You fought both the you fought both guys before, and if anything, you'd never pinned Roman Reigns. But what's the reason you want to avoid Samoa Joe so much? Is because you felt that cocaine clutch? You seen how close he was the a week ago? I feel like that did a lot for Samoa Joe, and I really like that touch added into it. But, like, the the intensity that Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar had with each other, it felt real. It felt great. Samoa Joe said, look at me when I'm talking to you. And Brock Lesnar, he, he did more than look at him, got right in his face. They were forehead on forehead, head on head, spit coming out their mouths. It was intense. It was real. It was what we care to see. Then Roman Reigns had some side comments. It was okay. But ultimately what led what this all led to was a number one contenders match next week. Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Probably going to be the main event. It should be the main event. 
Now, I'm cool with this as long as the generic thing does not happen. Roman Reigns goes over. I would... Listen, to me, I'm personally here in a win-win situation. Because if Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar happens at SummerSlam, just them. It is what it is. If we don't have to, you know, prolong that out to WrestleMania, that's awesome. But if we could get Samoa Joe versus Lesnar 2, that's great. I'd rather that. But you know what I'd rather but both of those? Samoa and Joe of Roman Reigns have a nice 12, 15 minute match. Great ass match like they can put on, like they have put on. And what happens? Braun Strowman comes out, lays everybody flat. Let's have a fatal four-way. Like I said last podcast at SummerSlam. Last podcast, I said Rollins, Miz should be SummerSlam. Fatal 4-Way should be at SummerSlam. It's looking like we got, you know, potential. I, I feel like this is all, uh, this is all coming to in for it. It's all coming to fruition now, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm meaning it up. But yeah, great segment, amazing segment. <laughs> I don't have much more I can say about it. And that's what that's where I'm gonna stop talking about Raw for the day. I'm not gonna talk about Gold Dust versus R Truth. Not gonna talk about the cruiserweight action that happened. Whatever doesn't bring my interest, I'm not gonna talk about it because it's a waste of me typing. And I'm gonna get a uh, what is it called? Um, not arthritis. The 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 the. What is it? When, I I know arthritis has to do with bones and there's like a. a I start sort of see with your hands, like when you can't move them in your joints, whatever. I'm not gonna talk about Raw no longer. We're gonna talk about SD Live now. SmackDown. I call it. SD, I type it in as SD Live, so that's what what comes to my mind. And listen, I write down notes when anything important happens. And if I was, I I mean that's what I do every time. And if I was to do this while um this show was happening, I would have had no notes. So I found myself having to just write the matches that happened, and I'm going to talk about them real quick. Styles introduced uh, the U.S. Open Challenge. Cena came out, said, I know this isn't meant for me, and Styles was like, yeah, it's meant for you. Let's wrestle right now. Crowd was into it. Then Owens and Rusev did the, you know, got heat because they fucked up the match. It ended up being a tag team match, and, you know, the baby faces won, as always. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> to be honest. I have no idea. Um, Ty Dillinger versus Jinder Mahal. I'm glad Ty Dillinger got some type of spotlight, but as far as really getting a chance, he got killed. It was basically a squash match, as what was his use for NXT as well. And Jinder won. He also announced that the Pujambi prison is coming next week, and that's a very big structure to bring over and do all that for. So I'm intrigued, and this this honestly felt like a go-home show. So I'm intrigued to see what they do at the, at the actual go-home show. Xavier Woods versus Jey Uso. I'm not going to talk anything about this. Xavier Woods won. Naomi goes to Shane. I, this is the probably the most... Uh, this and the next one is probably the key segments of the day for me. Um, Naomi goes to Shane asking for a number one contender. She wants to fight. Then Tamina, Lana, Natalia, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte comes out. They come in the ring. Not in the ring, I'm sorry, backstage. And Shane proposes, you know, his weak-ass booking, a five-way elimination match for Battleground. I'm cool with it. Whatever. But what I liked here is Charlotte was like, why is Lana in the match? What has she done? Tamina said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me talk, Lana. Shut up. That was her response. Because she has no reason either. Because nobody has a reason why Lana is in this match. I don't know who's going to win. Maybe Tamina. That would be a little twist and turn into it. So I wouldn't mind that. Now the last segment I want to talk about. The fashion police. or the They were rangers on this day. They were like uh, you know, cowboys and whatnot. And they confronted the hype bros. Asking if they were the ones who destroyed their office some weeks back. And they were like, really? You think that's what we're doing? We, we didn't come here to focus on you. We came here to focus on the championships and wanting a title, blah, blah, blah. But we kind of saw there was still a little shakiness between the group and a little bit of tension between Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawley. So I'm intrigued to see where they're going from here. I, I would say have Mojo Rawley or Zack Ryder 
preferably I want Mojo to turn on Zack Ryder. But I feel like Zack Ryder would be the, he'll be almost the the dark horse to turn. So I, I just want to see a heel turn between the two, get something going for a SmackDown segment. Also, somebody stole like the fake horse that Tyler Breeze had. So yeah, they're still looking for somebody. They're entertaining as all hell. They always are. But yeah, that's my take on SmackDown Live. As you can see, not much. And before I close this podcast off for the day, I want to talk about NXT. And before I talk about NXT, let me grab my bottle of water because uh, I'm getting thirsty. Sorry. All right. I got my bottle of water. Let me just take my sip. Sorry. I, I didn't have it next to me this time. I kind of forgot. Just give me a second. Let me enjoy this uh, refreshing. Uh, I'm going to act like I'm cutting a... Uh, endorsement check because I'm drinking a refreshing Poland spring. Ah. Ah. Greatness of Poland spring. All right. <clears throat> Let me just close the cap and call it a day. NXT. I've been saying for some weeks I was going to catch up. And now that I finally finish Dexter, the TV show on Netflix for like the 80th time. This was dead my fifth time watching that show, by the way. All eight seasons and 70-some episodes. I f- f- maybe even more. I think it's 80-some episodes. Or 90. It might be even, I don't know. It's a lot of episodes. And all the hour long. Finally finished that, so I'm finally catching up with NXT. And man. It's fucking amazing. It is incredible. Cassius Ono versus Aleister Black. Incredible. Asuka versus Nikki Cross. Last Woman Standing. Incredible. Robbie, uh, Bobby Roode versus Roderick Strong. Incredible. Um, everything, man. The storytelling. How they build it. It's like... Oh, Hideo Itami and this Cassius Ono thing going on. Incredible. Johnny Gargano just came back yesterday. I'm hoping. I want to talk about this in a little bit. You know what? I'll talk about it right now. All right. So, um, well, NXT, you're incredible because you take your time with each, with each story. You keep, you always promote the next NXT a week in advance. Even though they're pre-recorded and we can find the answers, we don't look for them. You always don't prolong anything. You, if a feud is hot and it's hot at its, at its hottest moment, you're gonna have the match. Doesn't matter if there's not a pay per view for another two months, you're gonna have the match right now, like you did with Bobby Roode and Roderick Strong, like you did with Asuka and Nikki Cross. Everybody seems to be busy. If anything, you don't have enough time. That hour, in my opinion, should go to two. Honestly, listen, the only thing that... Why I wasn't watching NXT is because it's not on TV, so I don't get the urge to watch it since it's on video on demand on the network. That's really why. You know, if it was just like I could only watch it on TV and if I miss it this week, I'll have to like find a link online and go through all that trouble. I, I would watch it every week, without a doubt. But... It's great. Undeniably great. And if we get a... I'm going to be at the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn show. That's that's why I wanted to catch up on my NXT so bad. And if I get the Drew McIntyre-Bobby Roode match, which I think... Look, they already promoted that match next week. Drew McIntyre versus... Uh, what's his name? From Sanity. Big guy. Big Damo. Killian Dane. That, that, that match is going to be next week. Um... Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Roode, if I get that. Hideo versus um, my man Cassius Ono. I'm praying, praying to God I could get Gargano versus um, versus Ciampa. Those three, those are three matches right there. You're gonna get Ember Moon versus Asuka. I feel like that's a guarantee. You're gonna get that tag team match, probably with Sanity. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they should put the tag team match on here. I don't know if that's gonna be a hot commodity. Especially when you got other feuds kind of heating up right now. Because you're going to have, you know, the, I said the Gargano match. You, I think you want to put a UK match in here, don't you? I think I'll, I'll be kind of tired if I don't see Pete Dunne. So, 
Let's hope I do. So that'll be five matches right there, and I didn't mention the tag team. So do you put the tag team on here? You don't have to, but the tag team has been such a high point. Do you want to do that? I don't know. Or maybe you don't put the Hideo and uh, Cassius Ono match on here, but I'm excited for that one. Either way, if that's a problem, that's a good problem. If they want to put six matches on here, I'm cool with that. You know, it's more for me to watch at the end of the day. But they also have, like, the NXT tape show before, so I'm, I'm sure I'll see Andrade, Andrade Almas, and, uh, who I have seen before already. I'm a big fan of him. Um, I just hope I see, you know, Tyler Bate, Pete Dunne, and those type of superstars as well. But, yeah, I think, if anything, NXT should go two hours, add the Cruiserweight division. I said it before, add the Cruiserweight division, add the UK division in there, cut off those shows. And wow, would it be must-see, man. I don't know. See, the thing with me is a lot of people say, uh, oh, NXT doesn't drive profit, like it's it's pointless or something like that. Listen, NXT is for development. And if you can make a little bit of profit off of your development, it's still profit. You know what I mean? Like, you're making money off of what should be considered you know, your training grounds. You think you were you were making this much money back then in FCW? And um, what NXT was before? No, now that it's so big and so wide and so great, and you're still able to make, even if it's a little bit of money, you're still able to make money off of it, that's good. That's super good. <laughs> so I see no complaint in that part of the <laughs> conversation. But yeah, NXT, I'm so excited. And, oh, I didn't even mention the person that I wanted to mention. Aleister Black. I don't know what he's going to be doing on the card. He has to be doing something. I hope they got plans for him, because I wanted to honestly see him for the title. But if they're going in the Drew McIntyre direction, that's fine as well. Um, Aleister Black is probably my favorite thing going on. In all of wrestling right now. And I'm sorry AJ Styles. You're great. Maybe maybe not better than... I know he's not better than AJ Styles. But uh, he's probably my favorite right now. I'm sorry. The guy's nice. He looks huge. Even though he's only like 6, six foot. 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, I feel like he's 6'6". Six, six doing moonsaults. And the guy is amazing. He's amazing. I just wanted to give some love to Aleister Black. He's one of my favorites right now. If not my favorite. Yeah, NXT, man. This shit is great. I have nothing but compliments for it. So, I've never been so excited for a show in my life. I've been to the TakeOver before. The the other Brooklyn TakeOver. i seen Nakamura vs. Joe. i seen the you know one of the greatest tag team matches of all time. The DIY vs. The Revival. Oscar versus Bailey. I didn't really like that match too much. And I didn't really not like the Nakamura and Joe match from last year. I love the tag team match, of course. And um, we had Andrade versus, I think, Bobby Roode. That was pretty good. And I did see Ty Dillinger. But, like, I'm so... I'm even more excited for this one. And Bobby Roode, I know I said you're an okay wrestler. That match you had with Roger Strong proved a little something more to me. I still think you're just a average wrestler with a great mouthpiece and a great look. And... You know what? I'm watching NXT every week now. This shit was great. Please, guys, if you if you haven't been watching NXT, if you've been slacking, it's not like I I mean I haven't watched two oh five live since Lord knows how long. But it's it's not I don't know how two oh five live is, but it's not it doesn't give me that feeling. It gives me something absolutely incredible. And as a big Lucha Underground fan, I kind of been slacking with Lucha Underground as well. I don't even remember what was the last thing I seen. I kind of wanted to just rewatch it all now that it's on Netflix for the most part, and you know all all that. Um, the it's just great. So thank you for what NXT the joy gives me to Triple H and uh, the whole the whole development talent. It's it's amazing, and it could only get better from here. To be honest, with the whole women's tournament coming up. They're only getting more wrestlers. I'm, I the reason I say you throw the UK championship in there is because they need a mid card championship. They could have Drew McIntyre go for the UK championship instead of the main one, and we could have had Aleister Black versus Bobby Roode, 
Or if yeah, I don't even think the person that goes for the UK championship has to be from the United Kingdom. I feel like if the US championship doesn't have that exception, the UK shouldn't either. So once again. <sighs> NXT, you're doing great. I love it. So thank you for making your television must-watch. By far. It's it's amazing. I'm excited for every week now. So I wanted to give a shout-out to NXT. And um, with all that being said, guys, that's that's it for the day. Thank you for listening. I didn't know I'd be having this much of an action-packed show for something that I didn't want to um, show as in the podcast. Uh, for something that I wasn't really looking forward to do because I didn't think I'll have much to talk about and I wanted to catch up with NXT before I did the podcast for this reason so I could throw something else to talk about. I'm glad I, uh, I I'm glad I watched it and I'm glad I kind of I didn't know this was gonna last 45 minutes so pretty good. So thank you guys for listening. You can catch us on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes under the name all of the above ENT. We have an MMA podcast. We have a a basketball podcast soon going to be having a music podcast soon going to be doing gaming that's going to be NBA 2K that's going to be WWE 2K maybe even some more like out of the blue shit like uh, the shooting games that I don't play but I, I know people that do so I might work arrangements around that have them post their material onto this page Um, by the end of the year I want a camera I want to be filming these podcasts even the ones I'm alone in and especially the ones that I'm with a group in I got big ideas for this channel, so guys, please stick with me. Please stay tuned. Honestly, if you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes, shout out to you guys. It's a, it's an easy way to listen when you're when you're not um you know when you don't have the because you can't close the YouTube app and listen. So it's an easy way to listen when you're on the road, when you're working out, doing all that good stuff. But also when we when when we get the videos out, we want you to be subscribed to them YouTube channels as well, so you can see our emotions and our animations when we are actually you know doing the podcast as well as watching the gaming happening and all that good stuff like we're literally buying the game card i think uh my man jesse bought his today i'm gonna buy mine very soon uh it's, it's all about money at this point and that's why i'm going to work in an hour and a half and you know i i, I i'm doing this all for you guys and honestly it's so entertaining for me i love doing it i look forward to it every week so thank you guys once again you make my, you give me something to do, and that's, hey, it makes me feel like I'm a busy person, to be honest, like, I have a job, I do have a job, like, I work almost 35 hours a week at that job while handling school, a girlfriend, all these other things, and the fact that I squeeze a podcast in there, and I'm a big movie fan, I go to the movies, like, almost once a week, shout out to Planet of the Apes, I saw the triple feature uh, in 3D, it was, it was amazing, um, yeah, it's just, my life is busy, so if I never, if these podcasts come out a day late or two days late, three days late, I will get them out that week. My life is busy, but I always have time for this because I love doing this. So thank you guys. 31 episodes in. I'm not tired of it. I hope you guys aren't either. Once again, thank you for listening. But with all that being said, signing out. Have a good weekend.